What's up guys, welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name's Darian Craig. I make a lot of fishing videos, uh, a lot of tip videos, and truthfully, I just love catching fish. I know a lot of you guys do too. If you clicked on this video, that means you probably like catching fish. Today, I'm doing a video that I've wanted to do for a while. As you can see around me, I've got a lot of tackle and a lot of tackle boxes, and this video is going to be on how I'm storing my tackle, like building out my big cranking box. This is one of my favorite styles of fishing, probably my favorite style of fishing and something that I'm most well known for is throwing a big crankbait out deep catching really big largemouth and there's several different crankbaits that I like but in this video we're gonna put together the best cranking box around and at the end of this video um, in a couple days if this video can get a thousand likes and a thousand comments I'm gonna give away a box of your choice if you want me to sign it I'll sign it if you want me to put some crankbaits in it for you, I'll go ahead and put a couple crankbaits in it for you. I'll put you two of my favorite crankbaits inside my favorite box, whatever one you want. So you can pick, um, if it gets a thousand likes and a thousand comments, then we'll, uh, we'll do a drawing for that. So hope you guys enjoy this video. This entire video is gonna be from here in my shop. And uh, unfortunately, this is some of the last days for me in the shop because we're selling our house soon, but it's gonna be on to bigger and better things. We're very excited about it. So I do wanna take and make the most time out of this shop while I can. Well, I've got you guys here. Um, obviously, this video is gonna be all about Lure Lock. They're a sponsor of mine, and actually, I'm doing a giveaway right now. So this is a Lure Locker. Basically, it's a storage system, and it's got these, uh, this thing folds down, and then you can put these trays inside the box, and it's got little shelves built in, so you can stack them in there however you'd like to. So I'm giving away one of these lure lockers. They're a thousand dollars. I'm sorry, sorry, they're not a thousand dollars. They're a hundred dollars. Um, I'm giving away a large lure locker. The way to win is very, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to Lure Lock's website and use my code DC20 on anything at all on their site. It can be one of these little small boxes. It can be one of these big boxes. It's gonna save you 20% off. And then uh, screenshot your receipt and email it to me or DM it to me on Instagram or Facebook. My email address is darianisfishing at gmail.com. And anyhow, you'll be winner entered to win that contest. But enough talking. I want to show you guys these tackle boxes. I think they're really cool. So y'all stick along. So a video that a lot of you have asked for on my channel is for me to put together a big cranking box. But before I get to that, I wanted to just show you guys what my square bill box looks like because it's very, not, very neat, very organized. As you can see, I've got the dividers in the middle. That's really neat. And one thing I wanted to remind you guys, if you don't know a lot about lure lock, obviously you can tell that they're a tackle box, but they've got this sticky gel on the bottom of them. And by now I'm sure you guys have heard about this, but basically this gel on the bottom, it's called Tack Logic. Here, this will be a perfect one to show. So this is my shaky head box, Tack Logic, and that's what's in the bottom of these boxes. And it's really, really sticky. And what that does is it allows your baits to stick to that blue stuff, and it's kind of hard to pull it off. All right, so your baits, you can you, when you set them down in this tackle box, they sit in that gel. And the cool thing about it is if your box ever turns upside down, the baits are not gonna fall out of it, which is really, really neat. Oh, there's always that one that falls out. That right there is basically the Luke Duncan of shaky heads. Has to stick out from everybody else and mess things up for a perfect video. But you get what I'm saying. This box, and the cool thing about it is when you're running, that, when you're running down the lake, and everything's beaten around, you don't have any movement of these baits, so everything's not getting shook up. Now imagine when you take that principle and you put it on this jerkbait box that's so expensive, I don't want these baits beaten around because it's gonna mess up the color and the paint on them, so I don't want anything getting beat up, and, and, and so this tack logic is gonna hold the baits at the bottom. But the reason y'all came here was not to hear a sales pitch, it was to watch me put together a deep cranking box. But first, before we do that one, I want to replace some of these older boxes that I've got, starting with my terminal tackle box. This was a Bass Mafia box. It did me very well, except for I think it was a little bit, it was very overpriced, but it was a little bit pointless because I ended up not even liking the hook slots on this side. So their big pitch on this box is, it's got this place where you can put your hooks in it. The problem with that is you get all those hooks in there and you, one, you can't get them out, they get hung up in that foam. But two, I just personally didn't like it. It was a it was a big pain in the butt. One cool thing about lure lock is you don't have to use your scissors. You remember how you used to have to take a pocket knife or a blade or something and cut the edges off these dividers? Well, you don't have to with lure lock because they have a patented snap 
uh, snap dividers. So literally, you just snap these blue things apart and you can load your box up and you can do every single one of them without having to use scissors at all and it's a perfect snap. I wanted to have a scale when I did this, like a little small scale so that I could w measure each one of these weights but I don't have it so I'm just gonna guess by size. So now we've got the box with all my weights in it. I need to get more and I'm actually gonna do a little bit more organizing on this to make sure each one of those weights are the like correct weight that goes in there. And now I know what I need is a little bit more of, they're easy to get to, and they're not beating around. The paint's not gonna chip on any of them. And as you, well y'all can't probably see this, but the only thing that's moving in this box is those uh, nail weights. The big weights are not moving around at all and it don't matter how much you run, those things are not gonna beat around. I'm gonna keep this box stored flat. I don't want this box stored vertically because those are weights, they're not like crankbaits, so they will fall out. I just, I've always kept my terminal tackle box when it's laying in my tackle box. Like my dirt bay box, it will sit horizontally with other boxes backed up to it. This one will sit on top of them like this. So anyhow, that's that box. Now for the box that all of you have been waiting for is for me to put together my go-to big cranking box. This is called a three-in-one. And the cool thing about this is, so on your standard, like old school Plano box, it has the horizontal um, dividers already in there. Well, the thing about Lure Lock is, since it has the sticky gel on the bottom, they give you the, ver the horizontal divider so you can customize it how you want. And the good, and there's also a lot of, uh, there's a lot of room for customizing these because you can put them at whatever spot you want. But once you get this divider put in, it sticks to that gel on the bottom and it is not going anywhere. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got my C10s and, I mean, C15s and C20s. These baits are really close in size. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna put a 15 on all the C15s, right on the belly. Uh, let's see, 15s and 20s. There we go. I need to get, so this has got 15s, 15, 20, and then the bottom has 25s. But I've got to get, uh, this is the silent. I only had one of the silent, so. Now I know, without having to do anything with this box, I know that this is all of my big plugs. And this box, so one thing I wanted to remind you guys, that you probably may or may not know, is when you're getting a box for big cranking, it is important to have multiple. You don't just want one of them because I'm throwing these big crankbaits on 10, 12 pound lines so I can get them down as deep as possible. When you do that, you're gonna break them off. It's just something that's gonna happen. Um, it's just part of the game. You know, if you go up in line size, your bait's not gonna dive as deep. You're not gonna get to the fish. If you go down in line size to get the, fit, the bait down to the fish, well, you're gonna break off, so. That's unfortunate, but I've got a lot of them. And you guys, if you want to go deep cranking, you need to make sure you got a lot of big crankbaits. Uh, C20, C15 are my two favorites. And then the C25, if they get out really, really deep. All right, next up is my frog box. On my frog box, I'm actually gonna use um, a box that does not have the tack logic in the bottom of it. And to be honest, they say that you can. I have just worked really hard throughout my life to acquire this many frogs, so I'm not gonna risk it, to be dead honest. Um, maybe one day I will, once I see more people that have it, but for now, I'm just gonna use this one. There we've got my frog box, which I'm very proud of. I keep my colors pretty natural. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the color I throw mostly is a Spro color called Killer Gill, right there. It's my favorite color. And I've been throwing this one around a bunch too. Um, I don't know if it's called Sun Gill or something. It's just a real 
real looking color. Here's my top water box I made the other day. I'll quickly show you this one because I showed it in my last video, but it's got all my big walking baits over here. So it's got the big old school gunfish. It's an absolute killer right there. It's caught a lot of fish for me. Um, it's got the little stick, which is what Atkins won the Forest Wood Cup on. Got the uh, some more gunfish over here. Whopper ploppers. My regular pop bars like the Six Cent Splashback, Rico, the G Splash, Spooks, Six Cent's, uh, Six Cent's Dogma, and then Vixens are on the top. So there's kind of my all my favorite topwater baits on that box. Here's my swim jig box, and I've got it organized. Um, by the sizes, so I've got like um, eighth ounce and quarters. I've got uh, three eighths and halves, halves with a bigger hook, um, a different brand, another brand, and then all my six cents ones are on the bottom. So different brands and different styles, weights, all those are in there. Here's a box I've been using for several years. I bought this a long time ago, actually. This has got all my swim bait heads. So these are also categorized by weight, but I don't remember the weight, which is an issue. But this box has held up for probably three years now, to be honest, and they haven't moved. I mean, they're, they've been just like this forever. And the cool thing is like, you can look at this, this uh, swim bait head. It's very detailed, it has a lot of color. It's really pretty. I don't know if y'all can even see that if it's focusing. Um, but you can tell that there's no paint has chipped off that. This box has been in my boat and never leaves my boat ever. And it's literally been in here for three years. It's looked exactly like that. That's cool. Jigs. Let's build a jig box. This is everybody's favorite box. And this is the one that everybody's like, well, can I put my jigs in a lure lock? Well, the answer is yes. And you probably can put your frogs in a lure lock too. I'm just too scared because frogs cost more than jigs and it's taken me a long time to acquire that many frogs. Although do I, I do have a pretty fire jig box, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so I use a ball head jig a bunch. So I'll put them on the bottom. It's a new six cents ball head jig. They come with that really, really awesome. I got a good hook, got a uh, wire keeper, a uh, screw lock keeper. So there's all my six cents ball jigs. They got rubber skirts, hand tied, very, very good jigs. And now I've got some just regular three eighths ounce, um, just dock skipping jigs. It's a brand I've always used. And notice in my jig box, you don't see a lot of variation of color. Uh, there's a lot of green pumpkin, a lot of brown. I do like this color in some situations. This is green pumpkin blue. I like that color, but mostly just regular green pumpkin. And then I got two slots of black and blue and mixed in there with it, there's black and blue and purple. The reason I got so much is just different style heads. Ball head versus an Arky head versus a dock skipping head. So. Here's my jig box. This is a fun box for this time of year. A box of Senkos. Perfect, perfect Senko box. Dead on the money. So I'm gonna get all my boxes and put them horizontally like this, and then some boxes will go behind them. So we'll get my big cranking box, put it in. Square bill box, put it in. Top water box. Frog box. My jig box. And my random, random square bill box. And 
and a jerk bait box. So that's kind of my, my core of what I'm gonna bring when I go to the lake. And I'll, for all you OCD people, I'll scoot this one over there. Now is the boxes that go on the sides. So these are all my medium size. So that's um, swim jigs and swim bait heads. And then here's Yamamoto Senkos. And there's my big weight box. The big weight box is always gonna lay flat. I'm gonna put that one right there. That always is gonna stay flat. I'll probably find a better place for it. That way it's not just all the way in the very back, but. And then shaky heads. And then anything else that's medium size that I can fit over here on the side, I'll put there. Um, I store my hooks in these six cents bags. I like them for now. Um, so that's how I store all my hooks. I don't like putting them in trays for right now. They, they, I did get some lure lock, very thin boxes. I might try putting my hooks in, but for now I just like keeping them in that bag. This bag has some emergency stuff in it. For now I'll keep it in this. And this bag has some six cents worms. So there you go. There is my tackle organization for right now. This is all the stuff that I've been bringing, all the stuff I've been fishing with. And I think um, for the most part, that's gonna have me covered for the next several months anyhow while I'm fishing. So again, these lure lock boxes, I think they're really, really cool. Um, I enjoy knowing that baits like, say this one, that just has a really, really good paint job on it. I am comfortable knowing that in this gel, these baits are not beating around, um, which tears, you know, which rubs your paint off. And then now you've got all these expensive baits that are losing their paint colors for no reason. So I think it's kind of a peace of mind thing. Just something I think is an extra step to make your, your stuff not go anywhere. But definitely promise you guys, this gel is not gonna come off on your baits. That was my biggest worry is that the gel, the tacky gel was gonna come off on my baits. So I was worried about not putting expensive hard baits uh, in these boxes, but this tacky stuff does not come up. It's heat tested to like 200 degrees or something. So it's, it's an unreal temperature that we're never gonna get to. I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun just getting to organize new tackle. That's one of the most fun things that we get to do um, as fishermen because we all love our tackle. We all love taking care of it. And so that was a lot of fun. I love messing with tackle boxes. If y'all remember, I actually just bought some brand new ones before this year, but I'm glad I've got them all replaced now with boxes that I can trust that aren't gonna damage my bait um, by getting boat rash all over them. So hope you enjoyed the video. Um, th again, if you're new to my channel, this is not a typical video for my channel, but if you've made it this far through the video, please remember um, if, we get a, if we can get a thousand likes and a thousand comments, I'm gonna give away one of these boxes with two crankbaits in it. I'll sign the top of the box for you specifically. Um, and you, you can do whatever you want with it, but um, that's kind of my gift back to you guys. Um, I'm doing several giveaways right now, so make sure you're checking out all my videos. Turn on the notification bell so that if I make a new video, you get aware, you know, you get notified of it. And also for those of you who are new to my channel, lately I've been doing a Saturday Night Live every single Saturday night. Uh, I think this week we're probably going to start them back to being at 8 o'clock. So 8 to 10, 8 to 10.30, have a lot of fun. We drink, we cut up, we just have a good time, talk about fish and stuff. So be sure and tune in for that as well. Three videos a week on my channel, one live. That makes four videos a week. And uh, I just really hope you guys are enjoying the content. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Um, don't forget a thousand likes, a thousand comments, and the giveaway that I'm doing for that lure locker. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one. Oh,